Winterization. A lot of you guys have asked for a video about winterizing your RV. There's only one catch. We very rarely ever winterize our RV. That's because we use its wheels to go south when the weather gets cold. <laughs> But for those of you who live in very cold winter climates, winterization is a fact of life. So in this video, we're going to discuss the basics of winterizing an RV. Why do we winterize an RV? We winterize because we put fresh water either in the tank or we introduced it by uh, the hose uh, at the basically the shore water. So there's two connections uh, to bring water into the coach. When water's in the coach, it can freeze. And when water freezes, it expands. And when it expands, it breaks things. So what we wanna do is we wanna winterize so that we add an antifreeze. And in this case, it is a freshwater antifreeze, safe to use on your pipes. Uh, it will flush out and uh, not cause any any harm to humans. Works on RV and marine. <coughs> we introduce this into the fresh water tank and we draw from it the way you normally would if you put water in here. Or we can add a line from the pump and we can pull it in that way. Some people prefer to pump RV antifreeze into their RV's city water inlet. You can buy special tools like these pumps that will help you with the RV winterization process. For more info, check out the RV winterization category in our store on Amazon. Let's just simplify this. Here's what you want to start with. We want to make sure that this freshwater tank is empty. There's no water in there currently. There is a nipple at the bottom of the tank that allows you to open it and drain the water out. So we would start with that. Fresh water tank is empty. We could simply introduce this in its current form into the fresh water tank. Now, depending on what kind of coach you have, it may be that the fresh water pickup isn't close enough to the bottom and you might need two gallons of this. So the tank is empty. Now we've introduced a couple gallons into the tank and we're ready to start the process. Before we start the process of putting this fluid and transfer it through all these lines, there's a couple extra steps. Okay, so this is a standard six gallon Atwood water heater. Uh, the first step would be to remove this drain plug right here. This is a plastic drain plug. You would take a socket, you would come up this way and you'd remove this drain plug. As you pull this out, water's gonna pour out. You could flip this uh, lever up here to allow uh, the water to come out quicker. You can open the valves uh, inside and you just wanna make sure this is completely drained out. That's step one. After it's drained, go ahead and thread this plug back in. Uh, you might wanna put some white Teflon tape on it uh, because you wanna prepare it for use uh, when you're ready to unwinterize, when you're ready to start using the trailer. So pull this out, put some Teflon tape on it or some plumber's putty, put it back in, don't over torque it, snug it all the way up to where it feels tight and you're done with everything out here. All right, so you've got the tank drained. Here's the mysterious valves that always trips people up. I'll explain how this works. So here's what happens. Water comes in, cold water comes in, it branches off right here to the water heater. It tries to go to the bypass, but it's currently closed. So water goes into the hot water here as cold, comes out of the water heater as hot. You see here, it travels up this other pipe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in a bypass mode. So all we're gonna do is take all three of these knobs and we're gonna turn them 90 degrees. So we turned this one and this one and this one. So now water is going to come in here. It can't go this way. It can go this way. And then it goes back up. So what we've done is we've shut off the water heater. Why do we want to do that? Well, we just drain the water heater, right? So the water heater is empty. We don't want to fill up this six gallon water heater with our special antifreeze fluid 
we know that it's going to be okay because there's no water in it, we want to bypass it. So that's what bypassing does. It eliminates the water heater from the equation and now we're sure that these pipes are protected, these pipes are empty. So Vinny demonstrated closing the valves of a standard, normal, old school Atwood water heater, which is what most of you probably have in your RV. There is a new style of water heater that will be in the newer RVs. And in this new style, you only need to turn one valve. And that valve will be located inside your RV probably beneath the bathroom sink and you turn that valve and that will put your water heater in bypass mode. Now it's time to circulate antifreeze throughout your RV plumbing lines. Faucets, showers, toilets. You should see pink antifreeze. In this case, you're gonna have to use your imagination. Some of you won't even need to winterize your RV. That's because you live in a more moderate winter climate and you can sort of get by without going through the whole winterization process. That's what we have done. We just watched the weather forecast and if our RV is ever going to sit unoccupied in times of really cold below freezing weather, we make sure that it's warm. Instead of putting RV antifreeze inside the RV, we choose to kick on the propane heat furnace and heat the trailer when necessary. And for us, it's very rarely necessary. We don't put the RV antifreeze in the RV ourselves because we like to go camping year round. And if you put this stuff in your water lines, you're going to want to take it out and flush them clean before you use your RV. Okay, winter's here and we've completely forgotten about the Airstream. We know that if we leave the fresh water in these lines, we're, the, the lines are gonna freeze and we're gonna damage them. What can you do in a pinch? The batteries are dead. You don't have any way to introduce the fluid into the lines. All you can do is drain the water. How we'll do that? Under the Airstream, you'll find two low point drains. Those are the lowest point that the water can accumulate. Go ahead and open up all the faucets, open these drains, step on the toilet lever, make sure that all of the water that is in these lines has drained out those low point drains. Don't forget the outside shower if it's so equipped. Turn them on, it won't provide a suction, it'll allow all the water to flow out. Also that water heater, drain that water heater. Make sure that plug is out on the bottom so we've emptied that. Empty this fresh water tank, under here there is another lever. Make sure both the gray and the black water tanks are empty. That's the best thing that you can do. Uh, it's better than doing nothing. Are we sure that all of the water out of the P-traps, all that's gone? No, some of that water is still there, but at least you've done your very best in a pinch to make sure that those lines are empty and you should be okay. Some people are satisfied just draining all the water out and they will even use compressed air to push any remaining drops of water out of the RV water lines. Again, it's up to you and really how far you want to go, the steps that you want to take to make sure that your RV is protected. All right, winter's over. It's time to de-winterize that Airstream. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to remove all of that pink antifreeze from your lines. We can simply do that by taking your fresh water line off your garden hose and connect it to here. By doing so, we're gonna apply water pressure throughout the system. Go ahead and turn the water on, open all the valves. That is your fresh water at the galley, the sink, the shower, flush the toilet. If, you, if your trailer is equipped with an outside shower, go ahead and turn that on, both hot and cold in all cases. Now we have fresh water everywhere. We've also introduced fresh water to all the P-traps. So all of that uh, fresh water has found its way down to the gray water tank. It's time to then uh, de-winterize the water heater. When it comes out of winterization mode, okay, you simply open these up and turn the bypass back on. Now this trailer is ready to use for summer camping. Simply 
go ahead and turn the hot water valve on in the kitchen and let that tank fill with fresh water until it stops making all those burning and gurgling noises then we know it's full you can shut it off finally we have the fresh water tank that's where we introduce the coolant into the system what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill that fresh water tank to about half full and then we'll let it flush out by opening the drain valve which is located down here between the tires once that's drained out then we should be ready to go in some cases you might have to flush it twice if you're getting a little bit of taste but otherwise it should be enough so that's it guys a look at the basics of winterizing an rv again we have only winterized our rv once in a decade so i really invite those of you who winterize your rv every year to chime in share your knowledge and experience with low loho nation thanks for tuning in thanks to vinnie lamica of vinnie's north bay airstream repair for helping us make this video if you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you hated it Give it a thumbs down and be sure to post a nasty, mean-spirited troll comment. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon, where we say, lo, lo, ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. What can you do? What we can That was <laughs> that was the stupid. Uh, uh. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say gracias, senor, is to visit our store on Amazon. You can go directly to Amazon.com/shop/longlonghoneymoon, or you can go to longlonghoneymoon.com and click the large supply store icon on the main page. The icon is so large, I don't even need my eyeglasses to see it. In our store, you will find all sorts of cool stuff, including Long Long Honeymoon hoodies, Long Long Honeymoon t-shirts, my hat, my shoes, my old underwear, my self-respect, everything must go. Proceeds from our Amazon store are reinvested into our show, which requires large amounts of duct tape and lubricant to keep running smoothly. Who let the flies out?